30 people and I only have 12. <laughs> okay. It's the quality, not the quantity. <laughs> For now, you need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Who's starting today? Who wants to start? Who's starting? Uh, Jordan Poole and Eric Pascal, along with uh, Steph, Glenn, and Marquise. Gotcha. You may have answered this earlier, but what? what What's the thought process of why Curry plays tonight and Draymond and D'Angelo don't when they flip flop? Uh, I just asked them, and that's what they wanted to do. <laughs> I'd love to <laughs> tell you that it was my grand plan, but uh, it's the NBA, so the players, the players tell us what they want to do, and we say yes. Has Marquise's performance, as much as you know, the realities of what you have to do roster-wise in the preseason, has that almost demanded that, that he, he get more minutes, more starting time? Well, some of it is the uh, the injuries to Moon and Willie Cauley Stein, um, but um, basically he's earned these minutes. You know, he's he's been fantastic uh, almost since the beginning of camp, and uh, in particular the last week of practice, and then the. Uh, last game against Minnesota. Um, he's, he's just been really good. He's earned it, and I always like to reward guys when they play long practice. He said that the, his, the situation here, just that the culture about the team has really kind of helped him. Maybe try to start a little bit shedding that, that reputation that he had. But what, what have you seen uh, in terms of his coachability? Unbelievable kid. Um, he's just, uh, you know, always... Uh, Open to coaching. He's asking a lot of questions. He's, uh, you know, he's never uh, discouraged. He just, you know, if he makes a mistake, he comes over and says, you know, "What should I have done on that play?" And he might go to Draymond or one of the vets. And uh, our coaching staff really enjoys being around him. He has a lot of potential. You can see it. Uh, and uh, you know, he's probably uh, ready to. Uh, to flourish after you know a few years in the league, playing on very young teams, and and not really um, you know having the chance to play with you know the caliber of guys like Steph and Draymond, um, it's a it's a good role. Sometimes it's you just have to find a fit uh, in the league, and sometimes your first few years you're searching, and uh, I feel like this is a good fit for him um, and for us. He's a good fit for us, so. Uh, hopefully he continues to, to play well. Also not that often you can add a 22-year-old former lottery pick. Yeah, and, and you know, if you think about it, we're we're in a position where you know, we're capped out. Um, we've been picking 29th every year, whatever, 28, 30, uh, in that range. And um, we haven't been able to add a lot of uh, young talent um, you know, in terms of top of the draft type talent. It's hard to guys like that so if, if we have a chance to you know to work with someone like that uh, try to help bring the potential out then um, I think that makes perfect sense so uh, that's why the front office brought him in and uh, you know it's so far it's been a, been a really good fit and hopefully it continues to be so Steve with the way the game's changed today when it comes to incorporating new players into a system what are some of the things you can do from a coaching standpoint to help guys break sometimes lifelong habits or habits they may have from prior systems um, I think it just helps when you already have a team that's been successful and that has players like ours uh, guys like Steph and, uh, and, and Draymond and Clay and um, you know, guys who are really good leaders, uh, and uh, I think there's a natural sort of mentoring that happens. And uh, and when you're coming from a place of success, it's a lot easier to try to sell, you know, what you're what you're selling. And uh, as I said, a lot of times this this stuff it happens because of timing. You know, you get a group that's that's ready to uh, to take the next step. You get a player. Who maybe is ready to uh, take a different step in his career, and so luck and timing and circumstance are, are all factors in this league, individually and team-wise. How about when you guys really started this run in the mid 2010s? It, at that point, like when you're integrating the system, changing it from the time you took over Mark Jackson, what are the things like that you may have done at that point to really push what you wanted to, to teach? For the team at that time. We're still trying to process the mid 2010s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know we're almost <laughs> out of it. <laughs> yeah, we're almost almost beyond that. Um, I think uh, the biggest thing for me five years ago when, uh, when I started coaching was uh, 
to respect the work that they had already put in. Mm -hmm. You know, this was already a really good team. Respect what the previous staff had done and then try to grow in the margins, try to get better where we could. And, uh, and I think that approach was a solid one. I think uh, our players knew they were already good, um, but they knew they could, they could improve, and we just tried to help them in those areas. Coach, what have you seen from Juan Toscano so far in camp and the couple of games he played? I might be Juan's biggest fan. He's fantastic, <laughs> wonderful human being, a hell of a basketball player. He's uh, smart, he's tough, uh, understands the game. Screening, passing, cutting, uh, defending. Uh, I think he's got a future, and I'm excited to have him. He, you know, he's uh, he was in Santa Cruz last year and got a lot better uh, as the year went on. He's had a really good camp, and um, you know, we think uh, we can continue to work with him and help him improve. You just had a player like Bikini that played in Luxembourg, Mexico, and obviously Juan has uh, had a bit of a similar career Argentina, mm -hmm. Venezuela. What does that say about the organization that you guys are able to? provide opportunities without judging on, on past and, and pedigree? Well, I, I think uh, it's important not to, to judge anybody until uh, you see them in your own gym and you get to get to know them. Um, and uh, I think that's important in life, too. <laughs> the Frank Vogel was just saying how jet-lagged he is and how tired he is. You know, they just got yeah. back less than 48 hours ago. Is it worth it? To, to send teams over there when you know that that's going to happen on the way back? Um, I, I think it's worth it. I, I just, I'm just i surprised uh, that they scheduled this game you know, 48 hours, less than 48 hours after returning. I know when we came back from China two years ago, uh, I think we had a game maybe three or four days later, and it was, it was difficult. And it, it took us about a full week to get over the jet lag. and, and uh, I do not envy them tonight. I can't imagine how they're going to get through this. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's a long season, and uh, they'll uh, they'll be fine eventually. But uh, it's a quick turnaround. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve.